Let's say simplicity. In the week, um, I came across this um, picture and we were speaking about this on Wednesday night. Um, but when I saw the picture, something in me was like, got excited. Because what it says is, I have a mustard seed and I'm not afraid to use it. Now I'm sure you all know that scripture where um, they come to Jesus and they say, increase our faith. Okay, increase our faith. And then Jesus' response is very interesting. He says, because they thought, hey, we need more faith. And he says, listen, if your faith is but as a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to go and it will be cast into the sea. Or, you know, I was thinking of that whole concept. What I love about about fossils like that, you know, what I love about that is, <laughs> is the perspective from the person that, that made that. His perspective wasn't like many years, you would read that scripture and think, yes, see, you know, but my faith is, you know, do I then have enough faith? Because, I mean, if I can move mountains with little, then I don't have enough. This is the total opposite perspective. This is like, you see, man, then it's easy because then I've got more than enough faith. Then I can use this little, and that's what Jesus said. He said, listen, I tell you, if you just have faith as a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to move it for me. What he was trying to tell them is, listen, because they came with him and said, Lord, we want more faith. And he said, no, guys, you're missing the whole point. You've already got more than enough. Just put to practice what you have. Just just speak, just use it. <laughs> like Esther said this morning, just, just do that steps of faith. You've got more than enough, now just use what you have. Okay? But it's a, what I love is the perspective of this. <laughs> I've got a mustard seed and I'm not afraid to use it. Come because that person believes what Jesus said. He said, listen, if I only have a mustard seed, then anything is possible for me. Nothing will be impossible, and I've already got it, so... <laughs> Nothing is impossible for me. You know, I've realized, like, in the simplicity of simple belief, that's powerful. It's not, it's not in the simplicity, but it's in the faith of the simplicity. It's in having faith like that. Childlike faith, in the simple. When, when you've got that kind of faith, then nothing is impossible for you. Um, so this morning, my message is going to be very, very, really, really, really simple. But it can be very powerful if you understand what I'm going to, if you take what I'm going to say this morning. It can change your life forever. So look at the person next to you. Okay, this is going to be the slogan for this morning. Look to the person next to you. Say, God is in you. Act like it. Okay. It's simple. God is in you. Act like it. Come on, when a situation comes, when sickness, when whatever, God is in you, act like it. It can be very simple, but it can be very powerful. Okay, so the power of simplicity. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Now, I want to tell you this. The gospel, although it can be very, it's full of mystery and it can get very deep. The gospel is supposed to be simple. Okay. Do you all agree that the gospel is for everyone? Yes. Funny domster, tori slimster. Come on, the gospel is for everyone. That means even the dumbest person on earth needs to understand it. It needs to be simple enough for him to also get it. Because it's for him also. So I mean, the gospel must be simple. Because otherwise, only half of it, will, only the intellectuals will be able to grasp it or will be able to get it or benefit from it. But God never intended it to be work hard. Okay? <laughs> he never intended it to be complicated. Because then it wouldn't be for everyone. He intended for it to be very simple, very straightforward. And in that simplicity that, it, you know, we want to complicate things. <laughs> and I find, you know, must must a lesson with Swiss State, and I think this is a lesson I've learned more than once. But every now and again, God starts learn, teaching me lessons on certain things. And one of the lessons I've learned, well, I'm still learning. I mean, we're all still learning and growing. But one of the lessons I've learned is, what I find when it comes to miracles, signs, wonders, these kind of things, believing God for impossible, that 
the simple, you know, let me give you an example. Years ago, I mean, the first half of my life as a Christian, I thought if someone is sick in front of me, I need to, the harder I pray, the more mental I put into it, the greater the chance is something's going to happen. <laughs> Come on. The more, the harder I bit, and then there were times I get a hard bit for out because I wanted to see a miracle. And guess what? Nothing happened. And what I've realized in time is, <laughs> the times, it's not, I'm going to try and explain it this morning the way I've, it's difficult to put in words, but I've learned that to live from that place of rest and know it, just that place of simple knowing, that thing of God is in me, so act like, you know, that kind of thing, like, I've got the fullness of God in me. And that simple faith in that thing, that when something comes, I know I'm greater than this. I mean, he that's in me is greater than this. Therefore, if I speak, it must move. You know, just that simple, not me trying. And uh, <laughs> I've had people stand next to me. Without me saying a word, I just stand like this. And then I ask them five seconds later, where's the pain? The pain is gone. Come on, how simple is that? Yeah. My very first time I've experienced a miracle, I remember, I mean, obviously it blows you away. Because your whole life you read about Jesus in the Bible doing miracles. And yet, for the first time, you do so, he does it through you. And you see a miracle that blows your mind away. And you're like, man, this is crazy. And I freak out. I mean, anyone, come on, you freak out when you see something miraculous. But I remember the, the very, I mean, it's almost like God wanted to teach me it then already, but I've missed it along the way. And now, you know, He revisits things and reminds you of things. But I remember that very first day when I experienced a miracle like that. While it's happening, obviously you look at this thing and your mind starts going. And I just started laughing because I knew the overwhelming thought I, I walked away with that day was, this is not me. That, meaning, there's no effort from my side in this. And I just laughed. The more I laughed, the more the thing happened in front of my eyes. And I stood back and it's almost like you look at something and you know it's happening by itself. I'm just, uh, I was just here, but it's, it's God doing it. I mean, I realized that the very, I was thinking back and I thought that overwhelming thought was, man, this is easy. And this is not me. Come on, it's, it's simple. It's simple. Now, for instance, the more we try and complicate things, sometimes one miss, one follows from this. God wants us to be have that simple, not just in the simplicity, but in that faith in the simple, that childlike faith, that simple faith. Okay, so there's a place in that where I believe is really powerful. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 1, I'm just going to read some scriptures here. Um, what does the Bible say about this? 1 Corinthians Well, the first scripture I want to, want to start with, and I'm going to go, come back to this scripture at the end. I want to say something more about this. But 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross, cross is to them that perish foolishness. I say foolishness. 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 But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. Ever say, it is it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross. To them that perish, it is foolishness. You know that some things of God, or most things of God, people that don't believe think it is simple. They think it's it's foolish. If, if, if we, the Bible says the natural man don't receive the things, only the spiritual man receives even the deep things of God. People that's been born again, that's spiritual, that spiritual, that also, we talk with certain language, we understand some things because it's by the Spirit. A person that looks from the outside think, yeah, he means it's more. So I'm like, they don't believe in God, they think he's a fairy tale, they think, once it's all mal, one groeien, like you're the groeien of what you don't even see. I mean, come on, it, for the world, it's foolishness. Because it looks very stupid, and it looks very simple. But I believe it's a truth in that simplicity, that, that's why, and I think it's the simple, that's why people miss it. Like even grace, it's um, it's the good and bad they so means they miss it because yeah. they can't get that aspect of God because it's almost too good. To be, it's too simple. You mean like I'm forgiven, like, come on, it's too simple. <laughs> okay, the good news can be very simple. So, now, go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. 
I'm going to come back to that scripture we just read at the end. So just don't worry. I'm going to say something more about that. But 1 Corinthians 2. Listen to what Paul's saying in verse 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I'm going to read it again. I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellency of speech. I didn't try, I was, didn't have a complicated message that you learn on my cake and say, yes, he has got a beard. I have a great word there. Where does he come from? He said, I did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Okay, so he didn't come with this huge big thing. He says, he didn't sound to them very complicated. He says, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Ever say, he said, I only wanted to know among you Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Ever say simple? Simple. Come on. I didn't come with great. I only wanted to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Immediately his message is simple. He, he didn't want to try and have a complicated thing. He came with the simple. Okay? He says, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now listen to this. And my speech and my preaching, that's what they know then, or that any other guy does that speaks. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Whew. That my faith, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So he says, my message was simple. I only wanted to know Christ, and I did not come with big words, big stuff. I only came and I demonstrated the, the reality of it to you. Okay, that is awesome. Okay? Like I said here, yeah, God never intended for the gospel to be complicated because everyone needs to understand it. Okay? So we can't complicate it too much because then it's a good thing. Psalm 16. You don't have to turn there. Let me just read Psalm 16. Okay, God's power is more, most powerful when we become just something. Okay, okay. We'll, let me just tell you this. We, I've read uh, a while back. I listened to this guy, and they were taking people on the streets to go minister for you know to people and in the miraculous and stuff. So they did like outreach and stuff and they were trusting God for miracles and they when they, they these guys when they this guy was saying when they get a group of people usually they take about just an hour sit them down people that have never seen a miracle in their life they sit them down for an hour they explain some stuff about their identity to them then they send them out on the street and suddenly deaf ears open blind eyes see people do miracles for them okay then he said but what was interesting is there were, sometimes there were a group of guys that came in late or whatever, so they didn't get the full, his, his full explanation, his message to them, but they only then got the notes from the others, you know, how to do these things. Like, so they, they had all the info on what to do from his notes, but they weren't there to get the full gist of what he was saying to them. So what went out, they went out and they didn't have the same success as the other guys. And then he said what was interesting because he didn't really give them methods. He only explained to them their identity. So they walked out there with a greater faith and sense in who they are in Christ, in the simplicity of His fullness, dwells, what they, you know, their words, have, all these things. And they went out in simplicity and they did it. And it was, for me, it's interesting that, or it was just amazing because it shows you it's simple. You know, when he, when, he, when he told these people, they, they didn't need to teach them anything about methods or anything. They simply told them who they are in Christ. And then they go out and they do these things. He just stirs their faith a little bit of who they already are. They go out, they do these things, and, it's, and 
in standard circle. Mm. But the guys that only that didn't sit there for the teaching on their identity, they go out, they try the same thing and they try all the methods but nothing works. Mm. Okay? So you can just be simple of you understanding what you already have. Okay. So Oh yeah, and this guy was teaching them for that hour, he simply taught them about the identity and the simplicity of the gospel. And then they can get to that and they do this. You know, I've, I've seen, let me use another example, I've seen a, a thing where <laughs> there was a guy in a room, he was, a family came to them for sickness, the, the, um, the father, the mother and the child. I can't remember the whole story. Years ago I've watched this clip on YouTube where these guys are, they come for prayer to him. And so he prays for one of them, um, and they get instantly healed. The, I think the the, um, the the man had something with his back or some I can't remember. But he, and the other one had something with the neck, the spinal thing that was the doctors couldn't do anything for years. They were sitting with him, and then the boy had a cast in his arm. Okay, so um, oh yeah, he first prayed for the boy with the cast, the young teenage boy. He got healed immediately. So immediately his pain was gone, full mobility, what he couldn't do two minutes ago, what was impossible for him, suddenly fully restored, fully healed. Then he asked the boy, so what do you think of this? And he's blown away and he says, well, phew, I've never seen anything like that. I've only seen it on TV or heard about it, but I've never experienced the miracle, you know, I've seen, but now I've experienced myself. He said, no, well, why do you think about this? He says, no, no, now I believe. He said, okay, so now, so you just confess, do you now believe? He says, yes, I believe. He said, okay, now pray for your mom and dad. He prays for them, instantly healed both of them. Mm. You see, if it, wa if it was complicated, that wouldn't be possible. Mm. Yeah. But because it's so simple, he just believes and he does it and it, it happens and because it's simple, he stuck wrong. You know, it, it's simple. Awesome. If it was complicated, that would not have been possible. And I've realized, man, we try and complicate this thing so much, and it's actually some, it's just having faith in that simple, having that simple childlike faith. Um, you know, we can we can take scriptures like John 14, 12, <coughs> Jesus says, the works that I do, you will do also, <laughs> and greater works. And then you can take something as Isaiah 60, there's one that says, Arise, shine. For your light has come, the glory is risen. Come on, it's already, you've already got it. You can either make it very complicated, or you can just, as with childlike faith, you can receive those scriptures. You can say, Amen, Lord, I believe it, I receive it like a child, I'm going out and I'm going to do this. Awesome. Come on, you've got it. You can either complicate, you, you can just complicate like that, you put your blow in the surface, or you can receive it like a child, you can say, Thank you, Lord, and you can step out in faith and you can do this. Tell the guy next to you, God is in you. Act like it. <laughs> you know, um, you read the scripture now, Ephesians 4.13, until we all into the same image. I've asked myself that question. If we are being changed into the same image, what does that same image look like once we are totally changed into the same image? Does that include the miraculous? Come on, just ask yourself that question. Of can you end up? You can say, "Yeah, I can spend many years and all of that." And you, you just they never manage morally. You get a problem with the food, and it. But there's no science. But no, that's not part. After that, that's it, man. Science wonders and miracles. He said, "These signs will follow them that believe." It, it, word, it is part of our. It's part of our life. We need to realize. Like this testimony about science, one is we need to expect it's part of who we are. I grew up in a very traditional, I get more sort of with the king, but late years I've realized, listen, this must be part. Paul said, when I came to preach, I demonstrated. Yeah. It's not just a, a message, there needs to be signs, wonders, and miracles. It's part of who we are. Now, if we say we're getting into the same image and likeness of being changed, then it means those things are part of who you are. People are going to look at me and say, Listen, is that Jesus? Oh, no, wait, it's Caleb. Oh, no, but it is Jesus. Hey, but it's, oh, but it is, hey, it is Jesus. Come on. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> For miracle signs and wonders. Okay. Go 
with me to Luke 18. You know, a couple of weeks ago on a Wednesday, we prayed for her husband. Your husband, his finger was, he had an accident when he was small. His finger, his pinky was so much shorter than the other one. And we were talking about science, wonders, miracles. Was it coffee hot? Was it like a gelach? Nothing complicated. Sit here, relax. Start your digit. Suddenly he says, why don't you pray for my finger? And I go, okay. Come to his finger. I put my hand there on his other hand. I said, okay, finger, you come in line with the other one. Suddenly, in front of our eyes, his finger grows like this. Mm -hmm. Until that. Was it complicated? Was it gelach and gejoke? There was no complication. It was so simple. You get what I'm saying? We try to make this so, it can be so simple. It can be so easy. Simplicity. Okay. It doesn't need to be complicated. It can be simple. Okay, so in Luke 18, this Luke 18, this 15. Now that we hear and the cry there in the back, listen to this scripture. <laughs> and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But then his disciples, when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto them and said, Suffer little children, and I say little children, to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verse 17, Verily I say unto you, We shall ever shall not, re shall re not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter thee. <laughs> Ever say simple? simple? Ever say a child? Simple. He says, if you don't receive the kingdom as a child, you're not going to experience it. You need to receive it as a little child. Do you hear that Jesus is saying, He's trying to tell him it can be simple. Childlike faith, simple simplicity. There's other scriptures what the Bible tells. Listen to what the Bible says about evil. Romans 69. We all know that song. Be excellent in what is good. Be innocent of evil. Innocent. Innocent. I don't say it's innocent. Like to use fun of evil. You hear that many of these things God's guiding us towards the simple? Um, if we just get before I jump to the rest, let me Second Corinthians eleven verse three says, But I fear this by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I say simplicity. Simplicity. That is in Christ. <laughs> okay. So go with me to Matthew 11. I give a safe and open some message concerning all this, but <laughs> God sometimes works in the sun. Matthew. Verse um, 25 he says, And at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast eat these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Come on, God can reveal things to babes. <laughs> Come on, to babes. He says, the wise and prudent. You don't reveal things to them. What's the other one that says God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise? Come on, the foolish things, the simple. I've seen it many times. God would use the simple to confound the wise. Okay. Um, Uh, 
and there's another scripture you can write on Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. Verse 130. The entrance of thy words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Okay, so let's go back. I want to I wanna kind of end with your scriptures. Here. I want to go back to um, the first scripture we read. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross unto them that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. If you go look at what that means, it's when you talk about preaching, it's not just preaching. Okay? It's not just the preacher standing up and preaching. It's, it actually talks about declaring. One of the words is declaring. In other words, it's in the declaring. If I declare the good news to you, so I can come to you and I say, your sins are forgiven. Come on, you've been healed. When, Oh, what, when I start declaring what Jesus has done on the cross, that is actually preaching the gospel. It becomes simple. The moment I declare it, God starts working with the word and he starts doing it. That's why they could have these, um, these big crusades and stuff. And a guy would come up and he would just start declaring the good news. And people will start coming up. Have you seen this? Where a guy stands up and he just started declaring good news to people. He starts... The, the good news, the simple good news of Jesus' of the cross. And just tell them about the finished work. And he just starts declaring unto them. Not just not explaining, but declaring. There's a difference, okay? Declaring unto them it, you will see people start wheelchairs. Have you seen those things? Mm-hmm. Suddenly guys, without him praying for them, people come up and they Yeah. Give testimony of what God is busy doing. Well, he's just standing and declaring the good news. Declaring, preaching. Okay, so, to them, what does it say? It is foolishness, but to us, it is the power of God. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 4, let me just end. Let me check exactly what it was with you. 2 Corinthians 4. In other words, it's announce. When I declare the gospel, it's when I announce the good news. Come on, announce the good news. You see, we've got a message to announce. To announce to people the good news. And that is where the power lies. When we simply announce the simplicity of the gospel, of the good news. It says it is the power of God. Okay. So there are many scriptures like this. Um, take one that says behold I give you uh, power of all the power of the enemy and nothing but shall by any means it come on nothing shall by any means it you know that there's people that that you can give that scripture to and they can read it and they can be oh okay cool I'll go quote it I'll go put it there in my, my bookie it will become one of my faith, one of my um, screen savers you know, or I'll put it there against my wall it's a nice yeah it's a nice statement. It's a nice. But for others, it is the very power of God that he can walk into a place that is that is demon infested and he can walk there and he's not scared at all. He says, because why? Yeah, because the Bible says, and in the simplicity of believing it, nothing can touch him because it takes the word as simple as it is for what it is. You know, I realize we try and complicate, let's say like that scripture that Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, and that picture we had on the screen, if you take that, that just that scripture. And if someone takes it like a child and he receives it like a child, then he can walk into situations and he can speak to things and he has got no he knows it will and it will happen because he believes it. It's simple. Huh? And he takes it just for, for what Jesus said. You know, I've realized we was <laughs> trying to complicate through the years. We take what Jesus said here and it can be that but the can be simple busy. Like let me just add another it must mean this and this and this and this and then we have all these sermons of what we think it should mean or could also mean instead of just taking Jesus' words at face value and saying, okay, Lord, you said it, I receive it like a child and I believe it and I'm going to live it. 
unbelief it. You know, and I've realized in that place of just simple belief, like, like that, my phone, I'm not going to let it go. I believe because God is it, and I'm just going to keep on confessing and believing. Come on, in that simple belief, that's why even a child can take it and can, a child like that, there's children like this that's been healing the sick, that's been healing blind eyes. That it's amazing when you see little children doing these things. Why? Because they've not been indoctrinated, they just like a child, they take it and they go with it, and it's simple. Okay? So this morning, I hope you see something in the Word that God, there's many places where He says the Gospel is supposed to be simple. Come on, just go, go and meditate on the scriptures that I've got. Go and read them again. Go and think about them. Paul says, my, word, my preaching was not with enticing words and man's wisdom. It was in simplicity. And what I, and I gave it to you and I've set you free and it was simple. And I stood upon that. I wanted to know nothing except Christ and the crucified. I mean, let's start Amen. living the simple childlike faith. Like when someone comes, you know, my fingers caught it. Well, I think it was a bit of and there's no, you know, I must try now or something. Now I know God is in me. I know nothing is impossible. Come on, we've got all the scriptures and all the stuff to go. Ek hoef hier nou nog scriptures te veel om te gaan. Jy het genoeg, amal dat jy sit, ek weet, jy het genoeg scriptures om op te staan. <laughs> but go and revisit that child. Like, you know, it was like God is saying to me, go and become a child again. I remember a couple of weeks in the worship, I was like, become, he said, remember how it was in the beginning? That first time you came to me, everything was, wow. Everything was amazing. Everything was, God, you're amazing. I trust you for it. I see you in every little small thing. And then after years, it was rock so slim. It was rock so complete. And we had all these doctrines. And, and we, it was, throughout it was pop, full pop. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and then we sometimes mistake because we, we try and steer too much into instead of just staying with the, what God is saying and trusting Him for the, on His word, standing on His word in simplicity. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I pray that this week, or not just this week, but that you'll step back into that sim simple faith, simple faith, simple faith. Trusting God, speaking, doing what His word says. If God says it, thank you Lord, I receive it like a child. You know that you don't need anything. You don't need anything. It is finished. Yes. yes. You don't need more glory. He says, Arise, shine, the glory is. You can receive it right now. Jesus says, The glory I had with you beginning, I have given them. That they may be one as we are one. Yeah, you are one with him. Come on. He says, You will do the same works as me and greater. These signs will follow you. How many scriptures can we walk with to tell us? It's already yours. It's already done. You see, but if we never go to this childlike faith of receiving it and saying, okay, thank you, Lord. Phew. And I receive it. And you. I don't care if you've seen a million people die from sickness because you've prayed for 500 and none of them got healed. Today's a new day and you start believing again that I'm going to see it. You know, if you, if you look at there's so many people with these tests in me, for years they've trusted God and there was no break and it's only the break again because they kept on believing and kept on trusting. You know, and that's the other thing. Sometimes we get distracted because we face a wall and sometimes we fail. Sometimes we fail. And then it makes us want to give up, back up. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you, listen, if you know who you are, the enemy of bump, or they weird, as you might not weird, and you just start with childlike faith operating in that. Now look how next to you. God is in you. Act like it. <laughs> Come on. Are you going to remember that this week? God is in you. Act like it. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Afrikaans. Mama's Afrikaans. Dat was allemaal op mijn zin. Oktober en september hier in jaar gebeuren het vijfde maand van mij. Elke maand moet ik er weer werk. Ik ben daar toch. Wij zijn dan gaan contact trekken en die verschillende mensen ze rekenen gaan betalen. En ik ga dit wel op een stuk gaan trekken geld. Dan gaan we bij geval leid toe om naar Absa en Stanenbank te gaan. Maar ik stop.